in and welcome to Health Talk on News Ghana Clock. I'm your host, Kelly Foley, and tonight, our topic for discussion is sexual dysfunction. We'll go for a quick commercial break. Right after, we'll move into the matters of the issue. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. In our midst is a professional pharmacist and a musician who has been practicing pharmacy for about 24 years and has in-depth knowledge when it comes to health on education. Other person than Mr. Michael Kofi. Welcome, sir, to um, Health Talk on News Ghana Clock. Thank you for having me. All right, so moving straight to our topic for discussion is sexual dysfunction. People have really been talking about sexual dysfunction in, and as relating it to a particular um, sex, as in whether the male or the female, and we actually don't know what it is about. Kindly tell us what is sexual dysfunction? What exactly is sexual dysfunction? Thank you very much. Uh, sexual dysfunction is actually um, a broad thing, but before we can say much about it, we have to look at what sex is and what is function is. Then we can go to sexual dysfunction. But sex, when we talk about in the context that we're going to describe, then it's talking about chiefly the two people, male and female, uh, that come together to enjoy a, in sex or to have sexual pleasure. Uh, sex should have some kind of, bring some kind of satisfaction. But then, um, there are certain stages that you go through in the process of getting that satisfaction. When this satisfaction is not met, then there is sexual dysfunction. Because we say that when something is functioning, then it means that it's going through all the processes that it has to go through in the right manner to elicit whatever good response or pleasure that the two people who are involved in it are supposed to receive. But once there's a dysfunction, then it means that something is not going on well, and so we have to address it. But then, is sex needed at all? Is sex important? Yes. When you look at someone called Abraham Maslow, when he came out with his Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which has a pyramid of five layers, he said that sex is as important a need called the physiological need as it is with food, clothing, shelter, and even how you breathe and exchange gases and also um, blood flows through your body, what we call homeostasis, you know. So if you are a human being, and excuse me to say, you have the opportunity to have it and you are not enjoying it, then it means that if some part of your physiology or your need, that basic need, has not been met. And then in a study that was conducted in America in 2018, and published on the 25th of September that year, showed that among 26,000 respondents, uh, people were having sex at least uh, 54 times a year, meaning that it is once on the average every week. You understand? But then some experts are also saying that sex could be uh, enjoyed at least three times a week among married couples. Wow. That brings you to about 156 times a year. And I'm asking how many of us have been having that kind of pleasure for that, especially among the married women and men. So that is about sex and function. Then we can now say that um, sexual function is in activation. You are enjoying every bit of the sexual relation that you have. Oh, okay, that's nice. Um, sir, normally... Um we normally confuse ourselves to sexual dysfunction and being um, related to the males and that they can't perform well when they meet their female counterpart. Like, I don't know whether they are talking about erection or something because it really confuses people with the two. Can you please enlighten us on that? Okay, so then um, we will clearly delve more into sexual function. Then when we go into the dysfunction, it will bring the understanding clearer. Sexual function actually involves the different stages that we go through when we have sex. 
and there are four basic stages of sexual, sexual uh, function. The first one is the excitement uh, 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 one, the, uh, the stage of excitement, and then from excitement you go to the plateau, then from the plateau stage you go to the um, uh, um, orgasm, and then after the orgasm stage you go to what we call the resolution state. And then one will say that what is the excitement state? The excitement state is when even before in, uh, the man and the woman start engaging in the real intercourse, the kind of things you see, the uh, conversation, the touching, the feeling of certain body parts, and then you know the nice warmth that both of you exude when you meet. In fact, enjoying even the company of each other brings about excitement. Before even uh, the woman gets into that level where she actually has the desire, okay, for sex. Now we should not confuse the two sexes when it comes to what they need during sexual intercourse. The men normally get what we call the desire first. Okay. A man will just see a woman and by her appearance, her looks, her makeup, the way she carries herself, the man says, ah, oh, wow, I wish I could have this lady. He has got a desire. But the woman will see a man and say, oh, this is a nice man. But it doesn't necessarily mean she has the desire. The woman will have to start uh, being cuddled, fondled, and then touched, said uh, good things to, pampered, and all sort of things. Then she starts getting what we call the arousal. So the women will start with arousal before they desire sex. Oh, really? Yes. But the men start with desire before they get in, into that arousal stage. Oh, okay. Initially, I thought um, it is for both sides who have the desire because sometimes you see a lady who will be like, oh, this man, the way he is, if I, you know, get this man, it will be very nice between us in bed. Yes. I never knew probably um, that the man have to get the desire first. Wow, then yes. this is really educative. That is the reason that a woman can go to a room with a man after the man has done everything and then he thinks that the woman is ready. Then suddenly the woman tells him, stop, stop, stop. I can't do it. She's, she reached a certain area of arousal. Especially maybe she was touched by a certain part of her body and suddenly she melted. But then her mind quickly comes back to her, and then she comes to her senses and says, no, 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 this is not what I'm going to do. All right, and so if you sir, force that, her, then she can say that you have raped her. Does that mean that sexual dysfunction has to do with the state of mind? It is basically also a problem with the state of mind. Your mindset will determine whether you will be able to even enjoy sex in the first place or not. Oh, okay. So meaning sexual dysfunction has to do with the fact that you not enjoying sex at all. But then the moment you enjoy sex, then it is not a dysfunction. The moment you have enjoyed sex and you have had the satisfaction, from the four stages we mentioned, the excitement, the plateau stage, the um, orgasm, and then the resolution where everybody goes to heaven and comes back on earth. And then you are a sort of tired or down. But I must say that women don't normally go to resolution. Oh, why? Once the women get into their orgasm and their body faculty starts um, uh, coming into that realization that they've gotten something from sex, they rather desire more. Oh, but okay. when a man ejaculates, that is, releases sperm into a woman's uh, uh, organ, then his bandwidth can go down and it can take several minutes to even an hour for the man to start getting erection again. And that is the time that the time of resolution that most of the time the women have to be patient and play with the man, encourage him, do certain things uh, uh, for him to get back. And then some women have suffered abuses from women as a result of the resolution stage, which they don't understand that it is part of the man's physiology, which isn't part of the woman's physiology. So at the time that you are ready for more, the man is down and he needs to come up again. And then the case in point was about two weeks ago when a man came and told me that for 15 years he had never enjoyed sex with the wife because of an abuse the woman uh, uh, gave him some time back when he couldn't perform. Wow, that, that makes it stage. sexual dysfunction. So he became a sexually dysfunctioned male. Wow. 
So, so among the um, two sexes, the male and then the female, um, which um, one is likely to encounter sexual dysfunction? Okay. Those that encounter, uh, encounter sexual dysfunction most are the females. Hey, wow. <laughs> Why that? A research that was conducted in the United States, again, indicated that 43% of women normally go through sexual dysfunction and then 31% of males go through sexual dysfunction. Then the, the reasons are numerous as we are going to see. But then any woman who hasn't been able to achieve orgasm before has never really had sex. So it means that most women who haven't reached orgasm have, have experienced sexual dysfunction. dysfunction. Probably not through the fault of theirs, but through their male counterparts, how they handle them. So sexual dysfunction is actually uh, much more related to women than men. Men have what we call erectile dysfunction, dysfunction. when it comes to uh, the ability to have an erection over a longer period of time to satisfy a woman and then be able to release the sperms and making the woman also happy in bed. So if the woman is going through under two minutes, and then he ejaculates and then he's flat, and the woman is now starting to enjoy it and the penis is not erecting, then it means that the man has not been able to satisfy the woman. So there is erect, a sexual dysfunction as a result of his erectile dysfunction. Oh, okay. So um, looking at what you are saying right now, um, with the female side, can you also say that most females don't enjoy sex because um, they have health issues? Yes. Um, let's look at reasons a woman will have sexual dysfunction. Any physical injury or any disease condition that makes the woman not able to really accommodate the man's manhood in her uh, vagina can cause sexual dysfunction. So if the man or the woman has, say, uh, cervical cancer okay. or breast cancer, you know, most women are sensitive at their breast. Okay. So the man may have to play with the breast to make the woman get aroused. But if the woman has a breast cancer or pain in the breast, the man will not be allowed to even touch it. For the woman to have that stimulation, that could also make her start responding sexually. Okay. Again, if there's um, a problem with cervical cancer, the woman, the man introduces the penis. There's so much pain, there could be bleeding and all sorts of things. So the woman will not feel comfortable. Again, if there are infections like um, candida or chlamydia or trichomonas infections, or she even has what we call the, um, um, the, the, the organism that causes cervical cancer. Okay. okay. Human papilloma virus infection is there. Then it means that the woman will be having pain during intercourse, so she will not be able to respond. Again, they could be hormonal. Some of the women might reach their menopausal stages and their hormone levels drop. The hormones also govern your responses to sexual stimulation, mm -hmm. so then you may not enjoy sex the way you should, especially for those who are premenopausal or postmenopausal. And the infections, I've stated, can cause pain. And then inadequate lubrication. Some men just go into the room with the women and then they just want to have sex. Without playing with the person to find out where their erogenous zones are, the zones that are sensitive to stimulation and then make them want to respond sexually. They just get into the room and then they push them on the bed and they want to have sex. The woman will be dry, will not have uh, 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 much lubrication. Lubrication is very important for sex and so there will be pain when she is uh, 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 having the sexual intercourse. So they think that pain, that the sex is all about pain. And so the next time she wouldn't even want to come. And then the woman also has sexual dysfunction. Then uh, physiological or uh, psychological problems. A woman who has been raped before, do you think the woman will want to have sex? Because sure. rape could be a very painful, traumatic experience that a wo any woman should go through. And so they may not want to go to any uh, other man. I had a daughter, not my real daughter, a girl I called my daughter, okay. that had been raped before. And it took us a lot of counseling before she could get married. Wow. So that such traumatic events, okay, can lead to a woman or somebody's spouse beating her up mercilessly. 
before sex, do you think the woman will have that frame of mind to engage in sex? So see, these are some of the uh, problems uh, with sexual dysfunction in women. Oh, okay, so in marriages, if your partner does not seek your consent before having sex with you, I am sure or probably um, one partner would definitely have a problem of sexual dysfunction. It definitely, but then um, if you have a wife and you have to sleep with the wife, and then you don't do it the right way. The woman can even sue you for uh, marital rape. But you see, some people don't ask for permission because um, they feel like that is my husband or that is my wife, and so the I'm women not normally supposed rape to. Men and it, and it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the men may end up raping the women, but the men, uh, the uh, women may end up abusing the men. So we say they have abused the men, but I don't think. Any woman has been that strong to rape a man. Unless, of course, they are two or three and then they overpower the man. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so, um, sir, looking at the uh, four stages of sexual dysfunction, which you mentioned the excitement. sexual function. Okay, sexual function, the excitement, the plateau, orgasm, and then the resolution. resolution. Do most people know this? Are people really educated about... Um, these things before they get to know because they realize that they end up cheating on their spouse or their partner in relationship that oh I don't really enjoy um, having sex with this person so I feel like going the other way around are people really educated on that so that they know how to handle um, their spouse probably psychologically health wise or other stuff yes uh, you have really hit the nail right on the head most people go into marriage be, without knowing all these things, unless the person has some experience. But then the problem is also got to do with people having premarital sex. If you have never had sex before, any sex is good sex. But if you have had sex with different partners before you get married, you know how it really is. Because most men and women have different levels of exposure. But, sir, and so they can how... bring you to that level that... Maybe you might not have experience with your male or female partner before. So once you get there, you say, oh, so there's, there are differences in this thing. And then they still seek to go out and then have other partners. So the women can cheat on the men if the woman is so experienced and exposed and is not getting what uh, she needs from the man. And also vice versa. If a man is so much exposed and then he knows what it is to have good sex with a woman, and the woman is also not pulling her weight and is not ready to learn. Because you can teach your partner. Oh, okay. So if the person is not ready to learn, then it can also lead to some of these infidelities that we, we, we see. Oh, okay. So finally, your last words. Um, in relationship and then in um, marriages, what are you telling um, our people out there um, in terms of sexual dysfunction? Are they supposed to seek for advice from their doctors? read more and then know how to handle their um, relationship or marriages very well in order to avoid them cheating and all that. Well, thank you very much. Um, before I get to that advice, you saw that I mentioned about uh, uh, causes of female sexual dysfunction. Oh, okay. But we didn't get to tell the male so that they can also seek help. Oh, okay. Sorry so if I could go back and then come and then conclude, it will oh, be good. Okay. It's rather skipped my yes, mind. Okay. Because see, the males also have a lot of problems. It could also be a trauma or psychological problem that they have. If a woman, a man has had, uh, like the man I mentioned, psychological trauma, where the uh, wife abused him and for 15 years he had not really enjoyed uh, having sex. And also maybe he's taking certain um, drugs like um, antihypertensives. The disease condition itself, hypertension or diabetes, can make the man... All right, sir, thank you very much for having a discussion with us on Health Talk about sexual dysfunctioning. It has always been a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kelly, for having me. Thank you, uh, listeners and viewers. Okay, thank you very much, and we will meet you next time in our subsequent um, interviews. All right, viewers, we've actually learned from today's discussion and you realize that sexual dysfunction has to do with a lot of factors and then especially with our mindsets, our health and then all that and people need to seek 
um, counseling from their medical practitioners, not only from the religious aspect, but from their medical practitioners in order to spice their relationship all their marriages this has always been held talk on news ghana clock continue to follow us on our various social media platform on facebook on youtube and on instagram and i'm always your host kelly Foley. thanks for watching and make a date with us next time on the same time thank you